So for part b, we want to find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of r is equal to 3 plus 2 cosine of theta at theta is equal to pi over 2. So we want to find the slope, well, of this polar curve. Now, let's not forget that slope is a change, you know, of change of vertical direction over a change of a horizontal direction, a dy over dx. No mention of theta or taking a derivative with respect to theta in this notation. So what we need to do is we need to take the derivative of y with respect to theta and a derivative with res of x with respect to theta. And then we're going to divide those. And basically that's going to allow those d thetas to cancel out, uh, giving us the derivative expression we want. So we can analyze it at, at uh, theta is equal to pi over 2. Now our derivative is still going to be in terms of theta, even though um, it, we don't see that theta notation into the derivative notation. How are we going to get an equation for y and an equation of x out of r um, is equal to 3 plus 2 cosine of theta? Well, we're going to remember that y over um, uh, r is equal to the not cosine, but sine of theta. What the heck am I doing? So uh, then we have that y is equal to r sine of theta y therefore is equal to r, which is 3 plus 2 cosine of theta times sine of theta. So y is equal to 3 sine of theta plus 2 sine of theta cosine theta. And we can go ahead and, if you'd like, write that as a double angle identity so we don't have to use the product rule as we take a derivative. And we have that y is equal to 3 sine of theta plus sine of 2 theta. And then dy d theta is equal to, taking a derivative now, the derivative of sine is cosine. And the derivative of sine is cosine but that we have that inside function of 2 theta and the derivative of 2 theta with respect to theta is just going to be 2. So we have dy d theta is equal to 3 cosine of theta plus 2 cosine of 2 theta. And I don't have a whole classroom of students watching me do my work to tell me if I've made a silly mistake. So let me double check. We are good. Okay, now with that same process, we're going to find uh, an expression or an equation that is x in terms of theta so that we then can take its derivative and then ultimately get our nice cleaned up version of dy over dx. So, we need to get this to be x equals, well, we have uh, x over r is equal to the cosine of theta. I'm kind of just recalling those um, conversion formulas that you learned back in pre-calc to convert between polar and rectangular coordinate system, not just try and give you some kind of magic formula uh, to find the derivative uh, of this function. Uh, as I look in my textbook, they give you this, this, it appears to be just this like, I mean, you can kind of see where it comes from, but this complicated formula to memorize for the derivative of, uh, of a polar curve. Uh, but yeah, you don't need to worry about that. Just Remember that you need an equation for x and an equation for y. So x is equal to r cosine theta. x is equal to 3 plus 2 cosine of theta. Now times cosine of theta. Distribute that together. And we have x equals 3 cosine of theta plus 2 cosine squared of theta. Now we're going to find that dx d theta. Take the derivative of x with respect to theta. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so negative 3 sine of theta. And here we have, we have the cosine of theta inside the power of 2, so we're going to bring that power down and reduce, so plus 4 cosine of theta. Now inside that power of 2 we have the cosine function, so we have to finish that chain rule. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we're going to change this plus 4 to minus sine theta. Once again, we can, I guess really not necessary here because we've already taken the derivative rule and I'm not trying to avoid that use 
of the product rule, but if you choose to, this is this can be written as negative three sine of theta minus two times two sine theta cosine theta and dx d theta is equal to negative three. Uh, negative 3 sine of theta minus 2 sine of 2 theta. One more time, just double check. Make sure you don't carry on with a small silly mistake. Excellent. So we got all that done. We're going to go ahead and get this out of the way. Write our derivative notation indicating that we do want to take that derivative at theta is equal to pi over 2. This is for teaching purposes. Maybe you could just go ahead and plug in the pi over 2 as you go to write your work. Is that exam is timed. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and write that um, derivative notation there. So go ahead and plug in the uh, um, no need to rush it. That is 3 over two. Now notice I'm not going to put I'm not going to put an equal sign here. I'm not going to open up the as many, you know a bunch of doors for uh, the AP to be able to mark off and stop grading because there's a linking error somewhere. Like you just write something wrong and then rewrite it the next, correctly on the next line. Don't no need to lose those points. The cosine of pi over two is equal to zero plus two. The cosine of twos are going to cancel out here, of course. The cosine of pi is negative one. Down here we have the sine of pi over two, which is equal to one. So negative three. And copy error. There we go. The sine of pi is equal to zero. So our final answer here is that the derivative of y, or dy dx, the slope of the line tangent to the graph, R is equal to 3 plus 2 cosine of theta at pi over 2 is equal to 2 thirds. And again, just make sure you give those AP graders a statement in context of the problem for every single problem. Don't say the slope is 2 thirds. The slope of this uh, lemison is not 2 thirds at every angle measure. It is specifically at uh, Theta is equal to pi over 2. Uh, you could also write a sentence, you know, the slope of this curve at theta equals pi over 2 is 2 thirds. Part 3 coming up.